Be ready. Ten seconds to go. Start. My interest in basic education goes back to the day when Mahatma Gandhi convened a conference at Vardha for discussing this subject. A few prominent educationists and workers in the cause of national education had also been invited to attend this conference. I have been in touch with the progress of this system of education ever since. I am therefore happy to have got this opportunity to come here and speak to you about this problem although I know I might be repeating this view expressed by me earlier. It also likely that the views which I express are not in consonance with those of others, particularly of educationists. Besides, it is also to be seen how far my views fit in with the policy which is being pursued by the central and state governments in this connection and how far it is practicable to modify that policy. Therefore, I hope what I am going to say will be taken as my personal opinion and that you will discuss it as such with an open mind without fear or favor. It will be agreed that the system of education right from the first primary class to the highest university course which we are following today is the same as introduced by the British government in this country. We have not been able to introduce any fundamental change in that system even after the attainment of independence. It is pointless to blame anyone for it because the peaceful manner in which the transfer of power took place made it inevitable that along with the governmental machinery and other things, the system of education should also come to us as a heritage of the old regime. It is now our duty to give thought to each one of these problems and decide in the light of present day conditions how they can be solved and then to act upon what we have decided. There is no doubt that in introducing this system of education, the principal motive of the British government was to secure as much advantage as possible for establishing itself in this country. The Britishers also thought that as compared to their own culture and literature, there was nothing much in Indian culture 
and literature which might be said to be worth preserving there is no doubt in course of time their views underwent some change the progress of science in europe meanwhile confirmed them in their view that scientific education could be imparted only through the medium of english consequently partly for the sake of administrative convenience and partly to propagate their own language and culture they stick to their own system of education which they introduced in this country there is no doubt that the education received by our earlier generations was based on this very system those people knew little of indian literature or culture and hardly felt drawn towards it although a few indian scholars who were inspired by english education did study indian literature and wrote a good deal in praise of it thus we find two schools of thought in this country the followers of one school believe that our own language alone can be the medium of education and until that is done education is bound to remain confined to a small section of society and will never spread among the masses the other school of thought thinks that in this scientific age our country cannot cut itself adrift from european thought and that at least higher education should continue to be imparted through the medium of english if that is not done they argue we shall fail to pull our weight and lag behind other nations in the race for material progress these views as a matter of fact apply not only to the medium of instruction but actually to the whole system of education our people have responded more and more to the call education during the last 50 years and this is evident from the phenomenal increase in the number of educational institutions in 1911 to 12 when burma and pakistan were also part of india there were 186 universities and colleges in india as compared with 537 in 1946 to 49 though burma and pakistan had separated leaving india smaller in area and population it is clear from the figures that there is a widespread demand for educational facilities this demand is no longer confined to towns alone but is evident among people of the rural areas also one result of this spread of education has been that many educated people find themselves unemployed government jobs 
एंड सर्विस इन प्राइवेट अंडरटेकिंग्स ऑफर लिमिटेड ओपनिंग्स फॉर द एजुकेटेड ओनली अ स्मॉल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सक्सेसफुल स्कॉलर्स कैन बी एब्जॉर्ब्ड इन दैम अ लार्ज मेजोरिटी ऑफ द एजुकेटेड आर एवर्स टू टेकिंग अप देअर पेरेंटल ऑक्यूपेशंस एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ देअर एजुकेशन दे हैव लॉस्ट द कैपेसिटी टू टेक अप दोज ऑक्यूपेशंस एंड दे आर नॉट इक्विप्ड टू फॉलो एनी अदर आइदर स्टॉप